Greetings, friends and future friends. Today's video is on the Korg PA5X. I'm calling this video Samples to Key Set 2. Now, this is the second video I've done on this topic on how to create a sample, convert it to a multi sample, and then save it as a key set. And then once you have it saved as a key set, then you can bring that sound or that sample up anytime you like once you save it in your library. So, there's a few more things I want to show you on this topic. So let's get in the studio and see how these things work. As you can see, I have my Electro Tribe, my Korg Electro Tribe. I bring that right into the auxiliary in of the Korg PA5X. And I wanted to show you that before we zoom into the screen. Okay, I got a nice zoomed in shot on the Korg PA5X. And let's get to work. I want to show you a couple things in this sampling tutorial. So we hit record edit, go over here to hit sample edit, bring up a sample. Now I pre-recorded a lot of these samples so that we didn't have all the time of recording things. So I'm going to bring up this first sample called, hello, take care my friend. Now the first thing I want to show you is if we play this on C4, hello, we're playing the whole sample. I want to get out of this loop. And turn the loop off so we can show you so I'll go back to edit now you can see this is the full sample that we recorded hello take care my friend hello take care my friend now what I want to show you is that when we go to loop and we turn it on and go back to edit you'll now see a yellow bar right in the middle of that sample that's right down here what it says is loop S, and that's loop start. So what's going to happen is when we play the sample at C4, it's going to start the sample, but then it's going to loop where this yellow line is. So watch, we'll play. Hello, hello, hello. Take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. Hello, 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 hello. Take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. Take so what that does is allows you to start your sample and to play it. But then if you want to loop a certain section of that sample, you can adjust it. And of course, we have it highlighted and we can take this and move it this way or move it this way. In fact, if we want to get bring it all the way past this and we make it loop here and now we'll play. Hello. Take care, my friend. Care, my friend. Care, my friend. So this is a really handy little tool because now you can adjust your sample and actually make it a two type sample, a two two sounds in one sample. So in other words, a hello, 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 hello. Take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. You created something really different from a single sample. So again, this thing right down here called loop S is the timing of the start of the loop. Really a handy little tool. Okay, I brought up a sample called Lemon Drop, KE. I brought this sample in from my Korg Electro Tribe. Now, what I did is I did not import it. I have my Electro Tribe running into the auxiliary in of the Korg PA5X. So what I did is I went down to record, made sure this was online. I played the sequence. Actually, I started the recording process and played the sequence and recorded the sequence into the Korg PA5X. Now you have it playing. What I did also is I created a loop, have the loop on, but you'll also see that I have the loop starting at the same time as the beginning of the, of the sample itself, because that's the way I want to play it. I, when it loops, I want it to stay that way. Now, I also did the same thing on Lemon Drop 2, and it's the same thing. It was just another version of this sequence in the Electro Tribe, and I recorded it the same way, brought it in, edited it. You know, we go to the start down here and the ending, and we created it. 
made sure it sounded really good, made sure it sounded like a good loop, because that's the one thing you got to make sure that the ending and the beginning, there's no uh, glitches there. So these are two samples I created from bringing in a sample from my Electro Tribe right into the Korg PA5X, recording it, and then editing it to make a great little loop. Okay, what we want to do now is create a multi-sample from this sample. And we go to Menu, go to Multi-Sample, and we'll go down here, and then we're going to go 1, which should be my Lemon Drop K. And if we play C4... Now, one little thing about this setup is that when you play this sample on C4... You can see it's right in time and it's perfect. But if we go up to E4, you're going to hear the pitch goes up, but also the timing. So, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to create this multi-sample and we want to bring in uh, another sample in there. So we don't want any keys above C4 to be active. So what we're going to do is go to C4, we know that that's created. Then we're gonna go here and bring that down to C sharp four. And if we look over here to key assign, we can see that C1 to C sharp four over here is the limits of that keystroke. And if we play the C4, if we play the D4, nothing happens. We play the C4. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna add another sequence. And we'll go, and now you can see that this number here is just changed from one to one to one to two. So we're gonna go to two. Of course, there's no sample. And we're gonna bring in lemon drop two. Now, what we did is we recorded that as the original note was a D4. So we have a D4 down here. Now what we want to do is bring that down and bring the next note would be an E flat 4. Let's go E flat 4. And boom. Now we got an E flat 4. So on the first section, we play the C4. And if we play the second section, back to the C4. Now, let's even add one more thing to this. Now we're gonna add, now you see this number changed to a three. And let's go up and make three. And let's bring in a sample I call one. All right, now we're going to make this. Now, what we have to do, when it talks about the original note, it's the original note it was recorded with, but we can then change the original note. This is an important thing right here, because what we're going to do is we're going to change that original note to an E4. Now, what that does is it'll play that sample in its original form at E4. So even though we recorded it at a different note, C4, we're now changing that note, the original note, to an E4. So if we play the E4, one, 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 one. Now what we want to do is then go over here. And we don't want anything higher than that. So we're going to go to F4. And we got F4. So now we have the C4, the D4, and the E4. One. So now we can actually play the C4. One, 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 one. 
So what I'm doing is I'm holding down the C4 and I'm playing the E4. One, one, one. Now, this is really cool. And if we go over to assign, you're going to see how this works. You're going to see how C1 to C sharp four is, you know, the first sample. And then the second sample and the third sample. And this is the listing of it. Now, one big thing to note right here, and it's very important. I spent about 20 or 30 minutes totally in a, an uproar, but you have to take what I'm going to say very importantly. When you add, when you look at this sequence, when we go back here, very important. When you look at this sequence, when you're adding, you add like we just have done there you're going to add so we added the first section and we added the second section and then we added the third section that's all great when you insert what happens is it goes to the beginning and when it's on the insert what's going to happen is it's going to take and move that sequence down so when you come back and you look at where these notes are if i did an insert this is one it's going to put this new sample in front of that. And what that'll do is sometimes when you come over here, it gets confusing because then if you try to make it above the C4, you're not going to be able to, and you're going to mess this all up and it's not going to work right because you inserted. So remember the big thing the takeaway is down here, when you hit insert, it's going to go in front. That sample is now going to be placed in front of this existing sample. And when you add, it's now going to become part of the back end. So in other words, if I added another thing here, this number would change to four. But that sample that we were going to be editing when we added that four would be on the back end. Again, quick takeaway. Insert. When you insert something, it's going to go in front of this first sample. When you add, it goes behind the second, the th second or third sample that you created. And when you insert, you're going to be changing the time in front of this first sample. And when you add, you're going to be changing the time past this last sample. Very important. Okay, now that we created this multi-sample, all we have to do is go over here, hit save, create a title for it, whatever we want to call it, and save it. I'm going to cancel out of this because I've already saved it for this tutorial. But then you have created a multi-sample. Okay, we created a multi-sample. Let's create a key set. So we hit record edit, go over to sound edit. And again, we hit up here, go to user, hit a blank, exit. We see that we are in a new program. We're going to polyphonic. And then we go to menu. We go to basics. Go up here to sound. Again, because we're going to be creating a sample based around a simple track, we're only going to use one oscillator. If we, were, we created uh, uh, another multi-sample or layering another multi-sample over that would maybe use a one or two or maybe more oscillators but for this tutorial we're going to use one oscillator come over here to the oscillator go over here to go user and we are there is the uh multi-sample we created lemon drop ke and if we play it One. So when we play C4, D4, and E4. One, one. Now everything sounds great because we edited in the multi sample uh, area and it sounds really good. But one thing we could change because if we go to a velocity range, so when we go to velocity range, you can tell when we lightly hit it 
there's a big difference. So scaled velocity bottom, we could actually make that 126. Now what's going to happen is when you touch that key, no matter the velocity of your hit on that key, it's going to play it at 127. Whereas if we dropped it back down to one or five, you're going to hear, I'm lightly hitting the key and it's light. So that's one thing I would really look at when you're creating a sample, especially a sample like this. So we're going to make that up there because we want that to hit. One, 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 one. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down the C4 and I'm hitting the E4. One, 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 one. Really cool. Okay, that looks really cool. Now, damper mode and all that, that's all going to be talking about triggers. The EQ, eh, we could change that if we want, but it sounds pretty good. So let's go back up here and save sound. We're going to call this Lemon. Oh, N, uh, O, P, from the Korg, Electrotribe, go OK, save, OK, looks like we got everything saved and everything's looking good, so let's exit out of this, and you can see we have the title of this preset this sound called lemon drop ke and let's exit out of it completely and now let's go to our key sets and we'll turn off upper two we'll bring up upper one go to users there's lemon drop and exit and now you can see lemon drop KE is in there, and if we play the C4, one, 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 one. Really cool stuff. You just created a preset, a key set for the uh, Korg PA5X. Okay, you can hear we have reverb on that one. One, one, one. So, as I've said in the previous video, I recommend you record your sample clean without any effects because then we can go over here to Mixer, go over to Upper One, go Mixer, and Effects, Insert, Master Effects, Effects Send, and you can see right here, Effects, we got a little bit of reverb or something on that. Because if we hit One now, One, One, One. One, one. You can hear it's dry. We bring it back up to 24 or 31. One, one. And that's cool. All right, let's exit out of this. So you have just, if we go back to key sets, you just created a key set from two samples, actually three samples, and you triggered them at different notes. A C4. a D4, and a E4. One. Okay, I want to create another key set for you. I call this one, two, three, four. So what we do is hit record edit, go over to sample edit, and we can just go right, and we don't even have to bring a sample up. We'll go to menu, go to multi-sample, and you can see we have nothing going on. So first thing we're gonna do is go, the first one sample I have is sample two, which is one. And it's on C4, but let's change this. Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this easy to see. Cause what I wanna do is go F, G, A, B. Go right up the scale, one, two, three, four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and make that original note an F3. And then we're going to bring its final note, an F3, be a F sharp three or a G flat. Get down here to three. 
and we're gonna make that right there okay now we're gonna add and make two remember when you add you these number will change so now this is the section you're working on very important bring this up to two bring this over here bring it up to two and we're gonna make this now what we want to do is make that a we're gonna make that a g3 and make its higher note make that a a flat three then we're going to add and go to three and bring in the sample of three and we're going to change that to an a3 so bring that down to an a3 there's my a3 there's my a3 right there and then we're going to make this a down to a b flat three and then we're going to add the final note i'm going to make this on the four bring that to four and then we're going to go bring up our sample four we're going to make that a b3 b3 oh, b3 where's my b3 there it is right there b3 and we're going to make the final note a the high note a c4 so now we have this c4 where is the c go on c4 and here we go c4 now if you look at our kiss sign you're going to see what we have just accomplished you know the first sample of one is from c1 to f sharp three and then the second is from g3 to a flat three the second third or the third sample is a3 to b3 b flat three and then the last one is a b3 to c4 let's go back to edit and if we play it one one two three four so what i'm playing is the f3 the g3 the a3 and then the b3 one two three four one two so if i play the f3 and the b3 one four one four one four one four, one, four, one, four three two one so we just created a multi sample now what we're going to do is we're going to save it and what we do is just hit save create a title and save it i already saved it so let's get out of here okay let's create a key set from that uh, multi-sample we created called one two three four so we hit record edit go up to sound edit we have japanese grand we tap on that and again go to user get a open slot exit now we got a new program go polyphonic hit menu go over to basic and first we're going to go to sound and we're going to create we're going to use one oscillator for this this setup this key set we're creating and we go to oscillator and we'll go to user bring up our there it is the multi sample we created one two three four and if we play it one two three four one two three four and you can see that the uh we're gonna go back to down to velocity range because i want to play that like i showed you before i want to make that higher so it plays it at full blast each time one two three four awesome now one thing i want to show you go back to sound we created one oscillator count now if we create make that number a two okay now we got two oscillators so now you're going to hear this one two three four three two one what's happening is that second oscillator is kicked in right here and you can see it's a factory and it's also a grand piano so basically you're playing that so 
if you're doing something like we're doing right now where you're creating a sample of a sound, you want to make sure you go back to sound and you make sure that that oscillator is one. That way you're only playing one oscillator. And as far as I can tell, when you play one oscillator, it plays the top oscillator. So we got this all set up. We got the velocity range increased. I think it sounds good. If I play the uh, F3, one. The G3, two. The A3, three, four. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Awesome. So next thing to do is to go over here and save sound. And we're going to call this, I'm going to get out of this and go one, two, three, four. Go OK. Save. Now let's exit out of everything. So you can actually see the preset we just created is right here. Preset one, two, three, four. So we exit out of everything. Go over to key sets. We're going to turn layer two off. We're going to hit, go over here to user. There's one, two, three, four. Exit out of that. Now you can see over here, right there is our Preset one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. There you go. You've just created a preset using four samples, brought it into the multi sampler, created the multi sample to a key set. And again, as you've seen before, I showed you in the previous videos, there's a little reverb on there, but again, that would go to mixer, key set, and then you can see we have some reverb on it. So that's how you do it. You take a sample, create a multi-sample, and bring it into a key set. And in these last two examples, we took multiple samples, brought it into the multi-sample area, created a multi-sample using those different samples, and created a key set. So I hope this video shows you more things you can do with the sampler function in the Korg PA5X. There's a lot you can do. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. You help us grow the channel. That way we can bring you more cool stuff. So take care, my friends, and thanks for watching.